Hey everybody, it's Mad Max again with another raid video. I'm going to talk about in the beginning of the game, and this is another part of the beginner's guide. And everybody wants legendaries, legendaries, legendaries when they first start out. They're looking for that great legendary to go grab. Well, that's not probably going to help you a whole lot. Because legendaries, even though you can get them to 50 without having to feed them any food, you still got to feed them five of the, you still got to feed them five, fit, you know, five star champs. Now, when you look at a legendary, and this is Blood Twin, you can get him really easy. You can get him out of a uh, tag team arena, just do your tag team every day, buy one shard, a hundred days later you get him free. But now you look at his skills, and I don't have, I haven't, this champ, when I look at my skills, my upgrade skills, I don't have anything. I haven't upgraded him at all. I've had him for a long time. He's a really good champ. Instead, my books went into Arbiter. And books are really hard to come by. Now, you look, you you have to put, when you look at her, you she's not even completely done out. Two books there, three books there, a book there. And then two books here. And you need the cooldowns. I would like to have the other 10% uh, debuff for this. She hit twice. And she got a 40% chance now. It's about 50. So she would be pretty sure of hitting a weakness, the weaken every time on her A1 if I did that. So I got to throw another book in there. I just forgot this round. Now, you look at a lot of these champs, got no books. And. When you look again, I mean, I book, I book most of her out because she's really good for clan balls. That's what I use her for. Now, before I had her, what I did was I used to use, instead of her, I used to use Taragi. Well, Taragi is an epic champ. And a lot of times, some of these epic champs are so much better than the legendaries, like if I'm going to go in, and I used Taragi for a long time on Clan Boss, really good in Clan Boss, but Taragi is great for Doom Tower, for doing the Scarab King solo, and does it in about 10 minutes. Really good champ to have. Now, if I, so I can get a lot of use out of Taragi for that. I mean, because Taragi can do any Doom Tower hard, and he can do it if you just get his speed up and get this gear on him. But he's an epic champ. He's not legendary. And he easily solos Scared King. Now, if I put her in, she can't do it. Even though she's a little bit better at clan balls, and the reason is is because of the skill where she does the ally protect for three rounds on a three turn cooldown. Now, that's not all that important because you can actually put Taragi in if you time him right because he does it on a he does the same thing. He does a only it's two turn. Well, at one point you're gonna get a stun or a stun target. It's only gonna hit one guy, so you can everybody else is protected during those AOE attacks with them. So all you really gotta do is have some kind of all you gotta do for that stun target, and usually that's the highest defense anyone. You can just do something else for him by putting a block damage buff up during that one time. And you don't need to have the legendary even in there. And now the other thing about, about it is, is the books. When you look at, let's go through the tavern and let's look at some of the skills. Well, Taragi is maxed out. And then you go down through here. I've got one epic book still left. Well, you look at all the legendaries. And I, this isn't a great legendary. That's not a great legendary. Uh, Mausoleum Lays is pretty good, but I don't use him, so I haven't booked him out. I booked out Dark Kale, I booked out Skull Crusher, I booked out all of these champs. None of them needs a book. And you know, you look at how many champs that I booked out that were, that were, that are epic. They got complete books. He's got complete books. So you've got like 12 or 14 champs that are just complete or at least that are completely booked out when you go down through here and look at it. I mean, you know, 
There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine right there. Then you've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 that are booked out right there. And there's probably one or two more. And I, so you've got 20 something champs probably booked out completely. They're epic. Now, when you look at my legendaries, you know, and I don't have the books for them, but you know, this one isn't booked out completely because I don't have anything for it, but I don't have that one booked out. That one's not booked out. That one still needs one. This one's not booked out. Very few of my champs that are, are legendaries are completely booked out because you have to save those books for where you need them. Now, Bad L didn't need many books. This was my first champ, and I booked it out because I, I got my first legendary champ. I had the book, so I booked him out. And, you know, and then you've, like, got Tundra. Tundra's not even completely booked out, even though she, I, I got the main ones done. Now... Some of these legendary champ like Tundra, Tundra hits really hard. I mean, she is a very hard-hitting champ. But then you go in here and you look, and you've got Jimbo. Jimbo is a very hard-hitting champ, almost on the same lines as Tundra. But he has a skill where that, this passive skill where he ignores the decrease, when he's under, he ignores decrease attack. Can't play a side on him. He also has, will have the unkillable buff. He ignores it when he's under an increased attack. Well, when you pair that with somebody like Arbiter or Gobergar, he, he does it too. And they both have the speed aura leads. They're both the champs that you're going to use for speed when you first start out. I mean, that's, those are the two champs. If you, if you grab this guy, you're going to use him. Well, the first thing you throw, you're going to throw is this thing to increase the attack, increase the turn meter for all the allies. That's the same thing that Arbiter does, but Arbiter does it for 30% of the turn meter. So it just speeds up your champs even that much more. She's just a better version of him, is all she is all he is. And she throws that turn meter and that increased attack. Well, after that, then you have Jimbo. So you run up against somebody like Skull Crusher. Which has this, when she gets low on health, and if her head sweep drops below 20%, she gets that unkillable. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Jimbo just goes ahead and kills her. Leonardo does the same thing. And so he just goes ahead and kills that champ. And you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about, oh, I got Tundra in here. Well, Tundra might do the stun, but you still got the unkillable and you still didn't kill it. So when you go into Arena, if I can find an arena team, it's kind of slow. I'll show you how hard Jimbo hits. And, of course, that won't work. That's not enough. But if I go in here and I go to this, if I'm faster than this guy is, and I probably am because he doesn't do the turn meter deal anyway. So you go in and you see you get the increased attack up. Now, if you don't, you wouldn't have Armstrong starting out, but you would have War Maiden. War Maiden does exactly the same thing. She hits everybody and does decrease defense on everybody. So that 60% decrease of defense helps you a lot in Arena. But then you're going to use a Nuker. In this case, I'm going to use Jimbo. And Jimbo, he killed everybody but that Black Knight. And probably because he didn't crit. Because he doesn't have a 100% crit rate. So then all I have to do, and it's also, he is really, really tanky. But see, he finished it off. And that's how hard Jimbo hits. Now, Jimbo hits really hard. And he is not, he is not a legendary champ. He's epic. Now, the other thing that you can do, and a lot of people forget about, is the Guardian Ring. Now, I've got, a, I pulled new ones, pulled new, new epics. Now, when you get two epics of the same type, you can go in here and like Banner Lords. When you look, these are, I wouldn't use him. I wouldn't use, I mean, this one is pretty good, but the other ones, I, they're not real good. So when you get a, when you get a deep set, all you do is stick them in there. 
Now, what do they do for you? They give you 10% extra HP, 10% extra attack, 15 extra accuracy, 15 extra resist, 10% extra uh, defense, and 6% extra speed. These are almost the same stats as your legendaries, if you can pull enough legendaries. I mean, and it's going to cost you a fortune, to be honest, to pull that many legendaries, or you can even get that maxed out. And I realize you can burn legendaries to of duplicate stuff, the other ones, and they do really well. But then you're losing legendaries and you can't sit down and you can't get this up either. And you lost the legendaries. But a lot of people, when they, if you're free to play like I am and you're not sitting down, you're not trying to get all this, you're not trying to pump a ton of money into it, but you can up your, you can up all of your um, epics really easy doing this. I mean, every time you get, you have to have the vault space, you have to buy extra vault space, but you just throw them in there and you don't do anything with them. See, there's a level one. I actually leveled some of these things up, just put them in the, I just put them in the sparring pit just to level them, just to be level them, but they're, they don't do anything. They just sit there. Now, this greatly enhances your epics. Well, you're not going to get that with the, with the legendaries. And some of these legendaries are just god-awful, to be honest, anyway. I mean, you know, there are some that are really good, but some of them are really bad. And, and they're trying to retweak that where the legendaries are much better than the, than, the, than the epic. But they haven't done all of them yet. And there's still some that are just terrible. I mean, there are some that I haven't even leveled up and don't even consider leveling up. I mean, when you sit down and look, it's just like, huh... There's Astastar, you know, it's just like Aslither or whatever her name is. Um, she is a, yeah, she is a legendary champ. She's only good in one area. She's only good in the ring. She's not good anywhere else. So, you know, you don't need that. What you need is, is a champ that you can use everywhere. See, she's sitting in the ball, or he, or whatever it is. But it's sitting in the vault. Well, why? I threw it in there. I let it level up in the thing, but in the sparring pit. But I've never used this champ because it's it's a pretty good champ in arena. But that's all it's good for. And when you go in here and you look at it, and I pull it out, and I look down through here at it, you look at the ratings of it, and the ratings of it are going to be absolutely awful. You know. Well, uh, wait, let me get the ratings. And it's got 4,000 reviews. Arena gives it 4.2. That's not one of the best arena. And then the rest of it says twos and three because it's a terrible champion. So when you're talking about, I want champs, I want legendary, I want legendary. Yeah, you're wanting good legendaries. And I understand that. But, you know, there's, but there's as much legendary garbage as there is good ones out there. Now... When you look at some of your other champs, like, let's take a look at Jimbo. And I realize he's forward and he's hard to get. But look, Arena, 4.9 for offense. The other one had 2-something for defense. That's 4.5 for defense. Faction Wars, everything down through here. He's not great at Demon Lord, not great at Hydra. But anything else, he's really good at. I even use him, in, I even use him for my speed team on the normal Doom Tower. And I mean, you know, just so I, I have clear all the floors really fast, but I've got a really good set of uh, speed runners that can just clear this out, can clear the normal out in about 20 or 30 seconds for every floor. So that's that's what I do these days. But now you look at Taragi, 2,600 reviews. Demon Lord, 4.9. Campaign's good. Dragon Lair is good. Faction Wars is good. And, you know, and then... Once you get good gear on him, he's a great champ, and he's epic. And when he's a great champ, you can sit down, and you can pop other ones that are epic into that. And you're making him even better when you do that. I mean, because he's a, he's a shadow skin. I've got eight of them that, are, that, are, that I've had that are just the same thing. Wish I had a few more to get the speed up. But, you know, but still, I've got 10% extra Eight hit point, ten percent extra attack, all that. These, some of these epics are really good. They're really great to have. And early on, if you're an early player, and you know, 
then this is what you, you know, you really want your epics and you want good epics really more than you want the legendaries. Because when you look, you can go in here and you're advanced. So once a month, you're going to get a legendary book from this. All right, now you can go into clan balls. And clan balls, if you're fighting, or if you're fighting Nightmare or Alter Nightmare, and it takes a while to get that team up, you got a shot at getting a, a legendary book. Even if you're killing this thing every day the way we do, you get about two books um, or three books a month. It's not a lot. Same with the shard. You're in there doing Alter Nightmare. If you get the last check, which is 70 million points on Alter Nightmare, you got a shot at getting a legendary book and a, and a sacred shard. But that's where you're going to get a lot of your books at as far as that goes. There are a few ones that come out of your faction wars as you progress up. You'll get a few out of it, but it's not much. When you beat the very last stage of the boss, you get one legendary book, but you only get it one time. I wish they would take it and they would reset this thing where it was like once every three months at least, but they won't do it because every they want to sell you the books, of course. Now, that's the Orkin, and I've already got it. Let's see, the other one that's open is Shadow Skin. I don't know if I got that one or not, but I got it. And so I've already got the legendary books out of this. So you can't get for that one. Let's see if I got that one. Yep, so I got both the legendary books out of these factions. Can't get any more legendary books. Okay, so, you know, out of your, out of your factions, out of those two. And I've got over half of them. So, you know, I'm not going to, I've got well over half of them finished. So there, I'm not going to get any more legendary books out of this. It's going to be done. Now, so you're relying on that. You can actually get a few out of Doom Tower. If you get up here and you can do Doom Tower hard and you have to do floor 80, which is going to take you a long time to get up to and you do floor 100. And, you know, and, yeah, I'm just about there now. I think I did it last time, last rotation. I finally got up there and I started getting the Sacred Shard and I started getting the Legendary Book. But it takes you a long time to be able to do Doom Tower hard. It's an in-game thing. But now when you look at Doom Tower normal, which you're going to be able to do in about four or five months, you're going to be able to get a lot of the normal parts done. You're going to get a lot, of course it doesn't show up anymore, but you're going to get a lot of Epic books out of this. This is where a lot of my epic books come from. I usually get four or five epic books at least out of Doom Tower every month. Then you get the monthly one. So, you know, you get six books there. Every so often you get an event or uh, an event or a tournament that has a has one in it. Clan versus Clan gives you an epic gives you an epic one just for the CVC. You get the six hundred thousand points. So you're gonna get enough epic books to level your epic champs up with. And the books amount to about 25% more damage. So that's the reason you, if you get these things booked out, and sometimes it's just the cooldowns that you got to have. I mean, it's just like Bad L. When you look at him, his skills, and he didn't take a lot of books. He's one of the few ones that does it. But you got, this thing has got a five-turn cooldown, which is absolutely horrible. And, you know, but you get the books in him, it's only three. So he becomes a lot more useful because this is what does the damage is, and it heals. It gives you a thirty percent. It gives you it gives you a thirty percent heal is what it's doing because it's giving you two of these a fifteen percent continuous heal, and he's doing this. He's doing this every time that he throws this and he throws the poison and also he adds the reflex set on and the cooldown. So he usually throws this like every other round. So you get a lot of heals, you get a lot of poison out of him, but guess what? You can't do it until you get him booked. And of course, you know, I had to go through all these other books that I didn't really want to put on this to be able to get this up. You know, these were the last things that came, and you can't determine where your books go. I mean, some people say, oh, well, if you click on the, the, the mouse when you're upgrading it, but it doesn't do that. I mean... Sometimes it does, and sometimes you get lucky. But now, 
they a lot of these champs require a ton of books. There's two there. There's seven. There's four more. There's eleven books you need for just one legendary champ. You're talking about books it will take, even after you've been playing for over a year and a half, to get 11 books is going to take you probably a month and a half or two months at least. And that's if you're click killing Nightmare uh, and doing, and you're getting the Nightmare Clan Balls down on 2x every time and getting two drops. And then you're, and then you're clearing some other stuff out and you're doing a little bit of Doom Tower. I mean, this is not easy to get the book farm. Where you can get a where you can get a good epic champ up, you know, like this guy. This guy is absolutely great. He takes, if you've got like Macau sitting in a, Shaw sitting in a arena, you put him in there, you can't get feared. His little triple shot kill will kill almost anything. It does so much damage. And then once it kills it, then everybody else gets fear on them. So, you know, he's a really good champ. You know, there's a lot of them like this. Cardinal is great because, you know, once everybody dies, you make a really tanky. And when everybody else dies, she reses everybody. And everybody has, and not only do they res, they don't get a lot of hit points, but they all come back able to do their skills right off. People love Seer. Seer will sit down and strip all the boons and does major damage depending on how much, they, how many boons she strips off. And she puts everybody to sleep, too, on top of that. And then people love Maneater. Maneater gives you an unkillable team as long as you got a painkiller. So, you know, there are some really great champs that are epic. Mordecai. Mordecai is the spider champ. He's one of the best spider champs you've got. I mean, there's not a legendary out there that's any better than him. There's one that poisons and uh, does the burns as much as him. But with all of his cooldowns that he knocks down for the turn meter reduction, where he does the turn meter reduction here, he does a he has a he does the same thing here with a ten percent. So he's keeping the he's keeping the turn meter from going on the spider. He is much better than Acock even, and Acock is really good. And I got him out of out of the uh, Doom Tower, but and Acock is. A epic. Helmont is an epic. He come out of Doom Tower. So does Briny. I mean, you know, there's several of these that are really good. And so when you look, I mean, look at my arena team. What did I have? I had two legendaries, which you know, I've got the Arbiter is exceptional, but you got to do all your mission. And she's one of the best legendaries it is. But you got to book her out too. And then, you know, after I got, and you got to get her up, leveled up, you have to get the masteries done. And, you know, but that's on any champ. But then once you get her, what did I use? I used her, I used Ninja, I used Jimbo, and I used Armstrong. And Armstrong is an exceptionally good champ. And the reason is, is because when you go down through here and look at him, is that turn meter that he does, that he's speeding everybody up, and that drop defense. That's what you want for that. I mean, I've used him in Doom Tower. He helped in Doom Tower a lot. Because it's just that speeding up way faster than everybody else and getting that defense down. You're going to do a lot more damage with that drop defense. But anyway, guys, that's what you're looking for. Don't, you know, when you're first starting out, you can do this game really great with some really good epics but that's the video i want to thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up if you like it and leave me some comments about anything you'd like to see or anything you want to know